Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum dear viewers. I am Dr. Muhammad Usman, Professor of Physiology and in today's video we will discuss about cardiac output and its measurement. So by definition, cardiac output is the amount of the blood ejected from each ventricle per minute. That formula is cardiac output equal to is equal to stroke volume multiplied by heart rate. Now we know that stroke volume is the amount of blood ejected from each ventricle in one heartbeat or in one systole. Normally it is 70 ml. So uh, if the heart rate is 72 ml then 70 multiplied by 72 it gives us the normal cardiac output that is 5 to 5.5 liters per minute. Now there are different methods of the measurement of cardiac output. In animals we can measure it directly by passing a catheter but in humans uh, we have to use different methods like uh, oxygen fig method which was named after this scientist and then indicator or dye dilution method, thermal dilution method, echocardiography, ballistocardiography and x-ray method. The last two methods are obsolete nowadays and the most commonly used method which is employed nowadays and it is non-invasive it is echocardiography. In this video we will talk about only oxygen fix method, dye dilution method and echocardiography. So let's begin. Oxygen fix method is based upon fix principle which states that amount of a substance added to or removed by an organ from the blood is equal to the difference in the concentration of that substance in the arterial and venous blood times the blood flow. Okay, so Q is the amount of substance added to or removed by an organ from the blood. It is equal to, this is the difference in the concentration of that substance in the arterial, A for arterial and V for venous, is equal to the difference in the concentration of the substance in the arterial and venous blood times, this is multiplication sign, times the F for blood flow. So it means that in this equation, Q is the amount of substance consumed, CA is concentration of substance in the arterial blood, CV is the concentration of substance in the venous blood and F is the blood flow. So we can rewrite this formula as okay, F is equal to Q over CA minus CV. So uh, application of this formula is to the lungs in the pulmonary blood flow where oxygen is used as a substance consumed in the lungs. That is why it is called oxygen fix method. So uh, now we can uh, write this equation as F is uh, blood flow. So instead of F, okay, instead of F we can write down cardiac output and amount uh, it will be equal to amount of oxygen amount of substance instead of amount of substance because we are now using oxygen. So we can write that oxygen amount of oxygen consumed per minute divided by concentration of oxygen in the arterial blood here A thus A stands for arterial minus concentration of oxygen in the venous blood. So uh, we have now developed this equation from this equation okay from this equation F is equal to Q over C A minus C V we have used this equation to calculate cardiac output like this. Now suppose amount of oxygen consumed per minute this one is 200 milliliter and concentration of oxygen in the arterial blood is 200 milliliter per liter and concentration of oxygen in the venous blood is 160 milliliter per liter. As you can also see in this figure that this venous blood uh, or deoxygenated blood coming from the heart, right part of the heart, uh, it contains oxygen at a concentration of 160 milliliter per liter. It is coming from the right heart. Then it comes to the lungs for oxygenation and in the lungs it is oxygenated and the oxygen used is about 200 milliliter per minute. And here is the concentration of oxygen in the arterial or oxygenated blood and its concentration is about 200 ml per liter. So, uh, now we will uh, find the difference between concentration of oxygen in the arterial and venous blood that is 200 minus 160 it will give us 40. So we will we'll divide 200 by 
40 according to this equation and we will get the answer that is 5 liters per minute. So, uh, according to the fix uh, method, uh, oxygen fix method, the cardiac output is about 5 liters per minute. Now, concentration of oxygen in the arterial blood, it can be measured from any convenient artery because arterial blood has almost the same oxygen concentration throughout. But the concentration of oxygen in the venous blood, it can be measured from pulmonary artery because the pulmonary artery is the site which contains pure venous blood. A sample of venous blood, it is obtained from the pulmonary artery by cardiac catheter. A long catheter is passed through a forearm vein and its tip is guided into the heart with the help of fluoroscope. Okay? Now, you can see a fluoroscope with a monitor in the modern cath lab. So, as I said, a long catheter is passed through a forearm vein and its tip is guided into the heart with the help of fluoroscope. So, as you can see, this is the catheter and it has been inserted from the forearm vein. Here it is coming into the inferior vena cava. From inferior vena cava, it is entering right atrium. From right atrium, it goes into right ventricle and then it reaches finally to the pulmonary artery. As is written here, welcome to the pulmonary artery. So, uh, in the pulmonary artery, there is pure venous blood uh, and its concentration is measured. Okay? So, uh, uh, concentration one, once we measure the concentration of oxygen in this venous blood, then uh, we can uh, put this value in the equation and we can measure the cardiac output. Now, what are the disadvantages, if any, of this method? Yes, it can only be used during resting conditions. Then, of course, this method involves hazards of cardiac catheterization because cardiac catheterization has got its own hazards. And also, this method causes anxiety in the patient. And we know that in anxiety, the cardiac output is more than normal. So, the value obtained from this method, it may not be 100% correct. Then, the next method by which we can measure cardiac output is dye dilution method or indicator dilution method. Now, in this method, we inject a dye into the vein of the patient and this dye should have following properties. It should not be toxic, it should not be diffused or stored in the body and it should not be metabolized in the body. Now, there are two major dyes which possess these properties and they are Evans Blue T1824 and Cardio Green. So, any one of these dyes can be used. Now, what is the procedure? First of all, a measured amount of the dye is injected into the superficial vein of the patient. Suppose 5 milligram of the dye is injected. Then one of the large arteries like brachial artery is cannulated and the blood is allowed to pass through a spectrophotometer. Okay? So here is this procedure shown. So this portion of the circulation is vein where we are injecting a dye. Then this pump is the heart and this portion of the circulation is arterial blood where we can measure the concentration of the dye with the help of spectrophotometer and you can see that this is measuring spectrophotometer is measuring the dye concentration and the dye concentration is slowly rising. Now the concentration of dye in the blood when it is measured by the spectrophotometer uh, at spec specific time intervals. Okay? The spectrophotometer, it measures the dye concentration at specific time intervals. For example, at every 5 second interval. Now, a curve is drawn between dye concentration and time as this. Okay? So, this is on the x axis we have time and uh, the dye concentration is being measured at every 5 second interval as you can see. And on the x axis there is dye concentration in milligrams per liter. So, you can see that gradually the dye concentration rises, then it reaches a peak and then it starts falling and after that it again starts rising. So, this is basically the point, okay? this is the point which is the time for the second circulation of the dye. But we are here now concerned with only the first circulation of the dye. So, what do we do? 
we a descending part of the curve it is extrapolated okay we extrapolate the descending part of the curve like this so uh, where uh, it intersects the x axis this gives us the time for the first circulation of the die or one circulation of the die say it is 30 seconds now from the formula that is cardiac output is equal to a divided by c multiplied by t multiplied by 60 where a is the amount of dye injected which was 5 mg c is the mean concentration of the dye suppose it is 2 mg per deciliter and t is the time for one circulation of the dye now putting the values in the formula we can get cardiac output which comes to be about 5 liters per minute now this method method has got certain advantages it is more accurate than the oxygen fix method it may be used during exercise there is no hazard of cardiac catheterization and it can be used to investigate a number of congenital and acquired heart diseases like it can be used in heart failure in heart failure uh, the graph will be like this and you can you can predict that the dye has appeared in the arterial blood after a longer time here you can see that dye has appeared in the arterial blood after a longer time if we compare it with this graph if we compare it with this graph then in the heart failure graph you can clearly see that the dye has appeared in the arterial blood after a longer time so and also there is a gradual rise in the dye concentration as compared to the normal graph graph uh, here in the heart failure there is a gradual rise in the dye concentration which is slower than the normal also the third thing which we can observe in the heart failure from in this graph that is the maximum rise in the dye concentration is also less, less because the heart is in the failing condition and its power is less so such a graph will indicate towards heart failure then the next defect which can be determined from this method it is vsd or ventricular septal defect in which there is an opening in the interventricular septum through which the blood can enter between the two ventricles as is shown here okay so in vsd this graph will be like this okay the dye concentration and time graph will be like this and it shows that the dye appears earlier in the arterial blood okay so dye has appeared earlier in the arterial blood and also it has risen more as compared to the normal graph and also it falls earlier as compared to the normal graph so these will be the characteristics of this graph in case of ventricular septal defect now the third method which is most commonly used nowadays and it is uh, very convenient and non invasive it is called ultrasonic method basically we use ultrasonic waves which are transmitted from a transducer the waves strike different parts of the heart and they are then reflected back and then they are received by a receiver okay the waves are received by a receiver and by this method we can record movements of the ventricular valves valve motion stroke volume and cardiac output output so this is called echocardiography hope you would have enjoyed this short video about the measurement of cardiac output please like subscribe and share to this channel happy learning to all of you stay blessed and allah hafiz